What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Season 2, Episode 52 of Hit the Books, the podcast where we dive deep into the world of sports and sports gambling. Each episode, we break down the latest news and trends, provide analysis, and offer up our best bets and betting advice. So let's jump into this week's episode of Hit the Books. On this week's episode, we got some college football to review, what we think's happening this year in college football, plus some news in the NFL and NBA, plus our power rankings and more in the MLB. Not to forget, we have some good stuff coming up in the next few weeks, as this is our last episode of Season 2. Next week, August 30th, is NFL Week 0 episode and the start of Season 3 here at Hit the Books. September 6th is our NFL Week 1 episode. We're super excited to jump in and do our also our live stream there, our NFL Picks and Preview. Let's move into this week's episode and introduce my co-hosts that join me each and every week, Huff, Ace, and Mackie. Huff, you want to get us going? What's up, buddy? Yeah, what's going on, everyone? Happy to be back. Uh, another week closer to the football season. It's week zero in the college football world. Uh, we're just under two weeks away from the NFL season next Thursday. Um, so, Or two weeks away, right? Is that Yeah, I'm right on that. Two weeks away from the NFL season. So college football will get us... Yeah, college football will hold me over until then, but... Football's officially back, and I can't wait for it. Let's go. Let's go, Mackie. Let's keep it rolling. How you doing this week, buddy? Yeah, like Huff said, football's finally back. I've been talking about it all summer, and I can finally stop watching all these MLB games. But uh, other than that, it's been pretty good. Awesome. Super good stuff. Ace, back. You're back after a two-week hiatus. What do you got for us, buddy? Nice to see you again. Yeah, hyped to be back, you know, two weeks off in the summer, but I was out there doing some work stuff and then playing some hockey, a uh, tough loss, can't complain, but what are you going to do? Um, happy to be back talking some sports, got the NFL right around the corner, so that's hype and baseball's heating up, my Red Sox falling out of that wild card race a little bit, but hoping they can get back in, um, got some good stuff on the docket today as well, so ready to go. Let's do it. Let's start off this week's episode with a top three segment. We're going to do top three Gatorade flavors. I'm pretty excited about this one. Uh, I'm going to go first. My number three is Riptide Rush, the fruity one that kind of tastes like grape. I think that's a fun one. Real cool. I like the color too. Number two is, this was a tough one for me because I really like this one. Like this is honestly my Is this all time? Is this all time? We jumped right into this. Is this all time Gatorade flavors? I yeah. think so. Like ones that I you, you can't get them anymore. I I went colors, dude. I didn't think that much into it. Why Hoff's gonna do this? I know what he's gonna do. All right. Yeah. No, yeah. Fine. I'd say so. Okay. Go. All okay. right. Number two. This is a tough one for me. I mean, I thought, uh, <laughs> I thought that, or this is the one that if I go into a gas station, like I'm probably grabbing this. But Frost Glacier Cherry. I love that white one. Tastes like cherry. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> and number one, cool blue. You can't go wrong with the dark blue. I love the dark blue. When I was a kid, I used to love the frost blue, but I'm a dark blue guy now. That's crazy. I hate yeah, that's a, that's a solid list. Yeah, Glacier I was going to say, you is, threw me for a spin not... there. I thought you were going with the light blue, and you just said cherry. I was like, Ugh, not not for me. I like the light blue. No, one, cherry is it. I'll, I'll get... I'll get right into mine. It's hard for me to put them in any order, but um, these are probably the three that I get on a main main basis. Um, there's that variety pack where you get the red, orange, and yellow ones. That's usually my go-to because I like all three of those. But out of my top three, I'm going to put the yellow at number three. Uh, the classic lemon lime, that's uh, that's always a staple. That's probably my favorite non of the like crazy ones. Uh, number two, I'm going to go with the the light blue one, the Glacier Freeze, whatever the hell it's called. Um, and number one, I, I'm going to go with the the old school, the fierce grape Gatorade. Uh, I think it was, was that, that's what it was called, right? Gatorade Fierce, I want to say it was. I don't remember exactly what it was. That's why I was trying to ask if we were doing like all time. Yep, yeah, Gatorade how, Fierce. It is Fierce Grape. Grape, grape Thirst, it. that was what it was called. Fierce Grape, that dark, dark purple is really good. <laughs> yeah. It was, a, it was the best uh, one of all time. That was electric. Um, let me get into mine because I have some similarities between the two of you. Um, yeah, Huff, that's an honorable mention if I could ever do one because I remember coming out of hockey practice and just slugging a Fierce Grape Gatorade. Like, the flavor was so strong. Dude, so good. Um, but all right, here I go with mine. So, 
Coming at number three, I had that Frost Glacier Freeze, the light blue one as well. At number two, I'm surprised um, a lot of people, you guys didn't say this one as high, but the Lemon Lime Yellow, that's like the vintage color. That's like a go-to. I'll have that every time, especially associated with sports, had that so much. And then at number one, I've got the Riptide Rush. Jesse called it out, but that's my number one pick. Um, I think that's like a mix between the Glacier Freeze and the Grape. So It absolutely is because it's there. not full on Grape. Yeah, exactly. It's like a lighter version of it, but those are my three by far, like any day. But you could hit me with any Gatorade and I'm still drinking it, like honestly. Except for the Glacier Freeze. I'll leave the white one in the fridge every time. <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> you guys are real Gatorade <laughs> fanatics. I, I, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking colors. So I'm going to I'm gonna rattle off mine right now. Orange, light blue, dark blue. And I don't know what they're <laughs> called. I couldn't tell you the what Glacier Freeze whatever the hell you guys are saying no there's three <laughs> you got one of them right orange Gatorade, yeah. <laughs> Gatorades are colors they don't have names cool so, blue um, really good do you say light blue then dark blue yeah yeah well yeah. yeah i agree with jesse's take that like the cool blue you age into it but uh, i either respect <laughs> the, the light blue Yo, you guys I, uh, you guys are like sponsored or something i mean don't even I get me started dude guys Huff, i thought you were gonna if say tiger listening. gatorade you remember that back before the tiger woods the scandals, tiger ones the tiger i was gonna gatorade do that and then i remembered the fears yeah and then he got a hit with all the too. charges they pulled that they pulled that mackie how do you feel about strawberry kiwi all right what color is it pink nah yeah. there's a strawberry watermelon i believe actually powerade yeah. flavors Orange. are next week oh yeah powerade uh as long as it's not zero, guy. hit me with all of it. But you're going nipple top Gatorade. Come on, right? Like at the gas yeah. station. Or, dude, if, if you can. can still find it in a can somewhere, that was... Oh, my God. Gatorade oh, in a can that literally was tasted electric. different. The dark green can? Yeah. That was electric. Or the powder, like in the locker room. You take one of those home from Todd <laughs> Gookin. <laughs> you you pull like it out of the... Of those. Yeah. I was okay. going to say you pull it right out of the tub. Use it for other stuff too, but uh, yeah, I think those are good lists. <laughs> Great starting segment there, boys. Top three Gatorade colors. Let's jump into this week's episode. Just 15 days till the start of our NFL regular season. I know we're all super pumped. Don't forget about our live stream that we will be doing each Sunday morning on various platforms. I am very excited about that as well. Let's start off this week's episode in the NHL. As of today, superstar forward Austin Matthews has agreed to a four-year deal with Toronto as the Maple Leafs ink him to a deal worth $13.25 million annually. Huge deal there for the Leafs. Austin Matthews staying in Toronto. Ace, you want to take it away on this one? Yeah, I kind of want to just say I told you so. I think it was either Mackey or Huffer saying he's going to Arizona. I'm like, no way he's going to Arizona. He's staying in Toronto <laughs> the whole time. I mean, it's one of the biggest spotlights in the league. And he's the man out there building a Hall of Fame career up in Toronto. Huff, Hate to see that, it, though. Huff, is that you? I don't know. I think we were both just trying to speak it into existence because it would have been cool. But I, I don't, don't know how realistic I actually thought yeah, it was. I but I, 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 I like this move for uh, Toronto. I, I, I mean, you're securing your number one guy. Give him whatever he wants. Give him the blank check. I like a lot of the moves that Toronto's made uh, this offseason with Domi and um, a couple of the other moves they made, Bertuzzi. But... I don't know. You you gotta you gotta ink up thirty four up the middle. I mean, he's he's the guy that you want there for the next four years. Yeah, agreed. Maybe this will get him out of the second round now. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Playoff accolades do not go into this thirteen point two five million dollar deal. That's a bag. But he deserves it. I mean, I would give it to him every day. I mean, one of, the, one of the best in the league. Top I'm surprised five. they only inked him for four. It's a four extension, wasn't it? Yeah, but this was his last year of his contract. Oh, gotcha. Imagine him on the open market. What do you think he could have gotten north of 14? Maybe. What's McKinnon make? Under 16? That. No. no. I think, I I think, think he McKinnon makes more than that. The, uh, Yeah, I think it's he's oh, at he, max. I think it's like 16.5. I was thinking it was old. Yeah, salary. McKinnon's like 16.5. They gave him like as much as he wanted. That's and he was mad. like, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, well, it's crazy. It's nothing compared to these other leagues. Compare, comparing him to Anthony Simon is making $30 million a year off the, over in Portland. I mean, um, it's really or some not- bench receiver in the NFL that makes $22 million a year just because of his name. But in a salary cap era, I mean, 13.25 is so much tied into that guy. He better stay at a 100 plus point rate for every season. I, 
I'd buy stock in that guy any day. Yeah, I think I I think they. I mean, you couldn't let him walk if you're Toronto. Put it this way: he's not the reason they haven't gotten out of the second round. I just need the NHL to allow the players to play in the Olympics so I can cheer for Austin Matthews on Team USA. I used to do a JVR back. In the they day. said they were possibly coming back with Patrick. that. Is that still a a thing? Is that still like? I bet in you it's the talks. I, 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 none of these guys have done it. This generation hasn't been there, so they definitely want to get their flowers. Connor McDavid on the Olympic stage needs to happen. Yeah, that'd be cool. When's the next Winter Olympics? Is it 2024? Maybe, I don't season? know. Is it? I think it might be. I think the deal 2026. was... 2026. Oh, 2026. All right, so the deal is still on the table. It's not... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm reading here that they're optimistic, but no deal is set for if the NHL players will appear. But you know what they say, Gary Bettman. Because wasn't it Marshawn? Wasn't it Marshawn that said something about he wanted to let the player? He they should let the players go. Yeah, I mean everybody says that. Look at dude, you remember when we were watching? No, but like Mark? he was like he was like tweeting or like said in like an interview or something. Like he was like v very vocal about that. He thinks it's bullshit that the NHL doesn't let the players go. Probably he's pretty vocal on Twitter um, with everything, so I wouldn't put it past him. He's done it before too. I think he's lifted the gold. The, uh, I think he was on the team when Sid scored yeah. the golden goal. I think it was Bershaw, Marshawn, and Crosby. Yeah, I think that was their line. <laughs> That's so steez. That's ridiculous. And they all were in their true fucking prime. Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah. And that's what Team USA was weak. I think if we get it nowadays, Team USA might take it to them. Get the Kachuk yeah. brothers Matthews, out there. The, Kachuk, the Kachuks, the Hughes, Eichel. Matthews. You get all the Hughes. There's... Ottinger and Net. Swayman. It, dude, they'd have a nice team. Fox on defense, Mackey, your boy. Fox, McAvoy, McAvoy, Quinn Hughes. Let them play together like they did when they were nine years old. All these guys yeah, right? That'd be insane. That would be hard. Yeah, and then and then all the and then all the new young kids like that are rookies this year. Obviously exactly. not Bedard, but like who are the other kids that I'm forgetting? Fantilli and Cooley, are they American? Everybody coming up nowadays is American. Yeah, that's what I mean. Troy Terry. Mackey, is he American? Trevor cool. Zagris. Yeah, but he was last year. Oh. Yeah, I'm just thinking like all the young guys. Yeah. Cool. Not saying like just the rookies this year. Yeah, dude, we'd have a nice team. They should do that. Canada Canada would just still have just an, as nice of a team, but probably better. Yeah, always. I mean, the goaltending maybe might be a little bit weak nowadays up in Canada, but. We'd hang with them, though. You probably give it to like Carter Hart. <laughs> he sucks. Nah, I don't even know who they would give it to. Who we give it to? Probably Hellebuck. Yeah, we'd give it to Hellebuck, Ottinger, and Swayman would be the three. That's a great three. Better than Jimmy Howard at the last time we went. Jimmy Howard, Jimmy Ryan, Howard Miller, and Ryan and Miller, John Gibson. <laughs> Craziness. Alrighty, let's jump into this next point here. The Tampa Bay Lightning have signed forward Brandon Hagel to an eight-year contract extension worth an annual va annu annual average value of six and a half million dollars. How much longer does this team have to build on their dynasty here in Tampa? Huff, what are you thinking about this one? I don't know too much how I feel about this. I mean, he's obviously a, he's been a nice player there, but as far as the question is, how much longer does this team have to build on their dynasty? Uh, they they looked they looked defeated last year, obviously coming off all those cup runs. But I'm interested to see this team and how they kind of bounce back from their first, obviously non Stanley Cup final appearance. But um, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, an aging team like a lot of these other teams in the East. So, uh, but they still got the studs like Stamkos and Vasilevsky and Net. So. Uh, Kucherov out there, but um, Ace, what do you think about this one? Yeah, I'm I'm not surprised at all that Hegel got extended here. They got to keep what they have together, and that dynasty question is pretty easy to me. I think every year they're going to be in contention. Coming off the cup hangover, like you said, they're loaded up front. They have Stammer, they have Kucherov, Point, they have Hegel now, they have other guys like Sorelli down the lineup with some youth uh, around them, and then on defense, still have Hedman and Sergachev, and then the best goalie in the world. So, I mean, they're going to be in the hunt for years to come. I know a lot of these teams, like we have a great Eastern Conference right now, 
but I still think that they're the team to beat year in and year out. They've been there, done that. Cert- bonafide stars on that team all around. Mackie, what do you what do you think about this one? I I agree with you with them. They're gonna stay relevant for a, a, many years to come. But I don't I don't know about their cup runs anymore. They had their three two and three years. Three That's and what four I was years, saying. Whatever yeah. it was. Um, they're still the team is still pretty stacked, but the depth got them a long way, and they just don't really have it anymore. Um, so I mean, they're, they've they're moved still, on from a lot of their depth. They're do yeah, exactly, and but they're still like a very skilled team, very talented team. Like you said, they have the, probably the best goaltender in the league, uh, Hedman on the point, which is huge, and the star power and Stamkos and Kucherov and point, and but um, the depth isn't there, and the East is 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 crazy now, and you know they got bumped last last year first round of the to the Leafs. Leafs finally get out of the first round. So I think, uh, I don't know, I think they're going to be uh, kind of stuck in the mud for a few years here to come. I think they have the longest, uh, I mean, that core, they have the best core. It's going to be together for a while still. Um, I think it was that lack of defensive depth, really, that got to them. Because you remember when they were winning cups, they had guys like uh, McDonough and Girardi on the point still playing Yanni big Yanni Gord was a, was a huge, like... Alex Kalor and Andre Pallott. I mean, obviously you lose all that. I think they'll be able to find guys to fit the mold because you have at least four or five really good players right now. Um, and they'll have some young guys pop in, eventually find find ones that work, but they got to get strong on that defensive end. I like to think of them as that Penguins uh, dynasty that they had in back-to-back Cubs 2016-17. They stayed, re- stayed relevant for a few years, but you know they're getting to the en- end of that era right now and st- still trying to stay relevant over there. So... Um, I don't know. I think the the Lightning are a lot like them. Yeah, I think they're a lot still. I think they're still a lot um, closer to their prime than those Penguins have been of recent. And I think they also have the best goalie in the world. What about in 2017? There was, I mean, Crosby and Malkin. As long as they don't, as long as they don't let Mark. You know how the Penguins let Flurry go. As long as they don't let Vazzy go, I think they'll be in contention. But that's the thing. Sooner or later, they're going to have to decide, are they rocking with them like the Penguins did with this core and look at the situation we're in with three aging pieces and we just brought in a 30-some-year-old defenseman in Eric Carlson. Are they going to decide to move on from maybe a Hedman or a Vasilevsky or a Stamkos and one of them not retire at Tampa Bay Lightning? You know what I mean? I, I, I don't see a scenario where they don't. Maybe Cooch. I could see Cooch or I'll move if on. They, yeah. If they aren't good I ever. Think- Stam coast if they're not wait. good he would be the best trade deadline they would get so much for him at a trade deadline yeah this Braden point he's like an un, unsung hero out there as well he's he's really good i think he put up 60 goals last season but i think that's the kind of guy they'd want to keep yeah sergachev and point are your young guys building around that's why hegel too is yep. a good one to have he had he had some good chemistry he popped off for them last year honestly where'd they bring him in from chicago trade deadline i was like uh yeah trying to think of a couple of their depth pieces they had last year what are you saying like Can't the year we just right played now. pat maroon and anthony sorelli anthony sorelli is a good piece down there i was gonna say sorelli's not bad they brought in the guy uh didn't they bring in tanner young yeah or no, tanner Janot. tanner Janot. Uh, tanner Janot. Tanner Janot. Janot, Janot, yeah but not as I'm good as it once was with right Kalorn and palat and gourd no it's like guys like glenn denning uh, Sorelli, Jano, Nick Paul. That guy had a really good had a good year for them last year. Yeah, he's okay. He's not. He's obviously nothing special. Kept his name in the lineup. Yeah, I think it's that lack of defensive depth. Like I said, like what are some names on the back end there? And they had the injuries too with Hedman and Sergachev. I think it's like Chernak was there, right? Their team. I'm looking at their roster this year. It's Bogosian, Chernak, Calvin what? DeHaan. Victor Hedman, Sergachev, and then just a bunch of guys I've never heard of. Yeah, besides those top two, there's really nobody back there that is any good. So it'll be interesting to see, but uh, I think they'll be relevant in cup contending for at that whole Hagel contract. Vasilevsky turn is going to be 30 by the end of this year. He's still young. He's got probably six years, seven years left to be in one of the best. Yeah, goalies, the goalies are usually pretty decent in age the hips start to go yeah well, his first surgery especially when you're that big his you, first you, surgery you'll, you'll know that it's the end i'll tell you what though there's never a bad time to bet tampa bay lightning with that stanley cup futures bet you know they'll always be in the hunt and make the playoffs probably get it at pretty good odds nowadays too i bet you they're at least the fifth or sixth team 
bet they're even higher than that. You think? I don't know. Let's find out. I was gonna say I'll, I'll look. Five at, through I'm seven is up. my is my estimate. They are seventh. All right. At plus fourteen hundred. See, it's not a bad, bad bet. You know they'll be there in the postseason. Avs, eight. I have them at eleven. Really? Yeah. <laughs> two plus two thousand. Dang. I have them I... plus two thousand as well, Mackie. Canes eight hundred, Leafs nine hundred, Devils nine hundred, Avs a thousand, Oilers a thousand, Knights twelve hundred, Rangers thirteen hundred, Stars fourteen hundred, Panthers sixteen hundred. Bruins sixteen hundred, and then Lightning at plus two thousand. See, I've like yeah, pa- I have like Pens and Rangers two thousand. See, I'll Gotta tell you, look shopping for futures. Yeah, I want to put sure. I I want to put this. I have Pens at twenty eight to one. I would not take the Vegas Golden Knights to go back to back. I think they no, got theirs. No, They're not going to no win way. again for a while. I don't think I they'll agree. go back to back. But I mean that they have a they'll good be core. competing, but they won't they won't win it. No, I don't think they ever will be. I think they've overachieved by what they've done these past few years. Kudos to them, but I think that that they're going to run up their luck soon enough. As a young West gets better, too. Let's get into fo- uh, some football. Yeah, let's do it. Let's shift our focus over to the NFL. The first one I got here, the Indianapolis Colts have given running back Jonathan Taylor permission to seek a trade. Curious to, he- to hear what team you could see targeting this young running back going into this season i saw on espn today or i got an espn article there was supposedly six teams that have reached out to the colts and two that have made legitimate offers for them i uh, tr- tried to look and dig and see if i could find out what any of the teams were i uh, didn't see anything no uh no luck finding that but uh a team a team that i'd be excited to see him go to i'll give you one in the nfc and in the afc Mackie, the nfc i'm gonna go with your dallas cowboys i'd like to see them go out and get them obviously they could pro- per- yeah, perhaps be one of the favorites to come out of the nfc i know running backs haven't been too uh he- valued heavily lately in this off season, but i think if jonathan taylor goes down there and steps into that already pretty elite offense uh take some pressure off of Dak in the passing game i like that fit in dallas uh, and then the other one, I, I, I like him to go to Buffalo and step in there as well. They've never had a really true number one running back. Uh, and Go get a guy like Jonathan Taylor. Same thing. Helps out Josh Allen in the run game and the pass game. So um, those are just two teams I'd like to see uh, Jonathan Taylor go to. Ace, what are you thinking? I'm thinking this uh, new mute button's harder to figure out, but I'll get to it one day. Um... Yeah, no, but with Jonathan Taylor, I mean, I think it's pretty crazy that he's requesting a trade now. Honestly, my personal take is that he ends up staying in Indianapolis and they work this out. Um, They'll probably end up giving him the most money out of anybody. And I don't see any trade package being good enough to entice them away from him, especially in a weak division. I know the Jaguars are on the up, the come up, and uh, the Titans and the Texans are looking to get stronger. But it's really wide open, in my opinion. Um. But I think that a good team for him to end up with would be the Miami Dolphins. Why not? I mean, they just got Dalvin Cook to the Jets. They just got Ezekiel Elliott to the Patriots. And imagine if the Dolphins, with all the star power that they have, they could work out a way to bring him in and join that arms race of elite or former elite running backs um, in the AFCs. I like them. I like him going to the Dolphins. Huff, I don't think he's going to come to Dallas because Dallas just spent all this money. What are they going to go do, overpay running back when they have just put all their chips in on Tony Pollard? Um, I think he'd be a good fit. It just doesn't fit what we're going with for right now and with our money situation. I'd like to see him in Miami, though. Miami, with all that offensive star power already, throw a top, probably a top five running back in the league right in there. They could be pretty, pretty damn good. Good stuff there, boys. Let's shift it down south. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers officially named Baker Mayfield as their starting quarterback for week one. Not really a surprise here, I don't think, but... Any comments on this one? The one four games. I think it was more year. of a su- I was gonna say I think it was more of a surprise that this uh wasn't I mean, I, I don't know if it was a surprise that it wasn't a given because there was reports that he was having a legitimate quarterback battle with uh with Kyle Trask Kyle down Trask. there. It, it, Kyle Trask, Trask, shout camp, out the so. Florida Gators goat, dude. They should have went to the uh college football playoffs, but the guy threw his shoe, remember that? <laughs> No, I don't remember that. I don't against, remember that either. <laughs> against LSU, it cost them the chance to go to the uh, 
to the SEC championship, and it was third down, and they made a crucial stop. The cornerback on the Gators took the shoe of a player on offense and threw it. It got an unsportsmanlike <laughs> conduct, 15 yards, first down. Florida loses the game now, and then Florida misses the, the SEC championship. Kyle Pitts never plays again for Florida. He sits out the remaining games, and they don't go to the college football playoffs. Kadarius Tony was on that team. Kyle Trask, that was a crazy. Yeah, one. I knew Kadarius Tony was on that team. They were a wagon too. I just didn't know that game. They were a wagon, but no. Um, I mean, yeah, that's crazy though. But Baker Mayfield got to watch out for the backdoor covers now. You know, he loves those fourth quarter. He loves he them. He loves them. Short. In games where he's really not, he has no business being in. He's throwing a late, late touchdown to cover a twelve and a half point spread. <laughs> I was gonna say he's gonna be getting a lot of big spreads down there as a as a buck with that team. I think. At least he likes to chuck the rock up, though. I'm a big Mike Evans guy, and uh, hopefully... I was gonna say he has options. He has a big Rashad arm White too. out of the backfield. I don't think he's bad. I like him. He likes to play in shootouts, so you could watch for Evans and Godwin to blow up a bit this year. Um, because you know he'll throw his turnovers. He'll throw like three hundred, two touchdowns, two picks, three picks. But. That's a- uh, it's a terrible division too. So you win a few games you're not supposed to, and you could could find your way in the hunt with seven wins going into the week eighteen. <laughs> it's funny though because I'm high on these young teams. I really like the, what the Falcons have. A lot of young options on offense. Whether or not they pan out is the question. But look at you got Ritter, you got Bijan, you got Drake London and Kyle Pitts. I mean they're all supposed to be pretty good. So that's that's who I'm hoping pans out. But I don't know if I'm betting anything on them. I think the Saints win the division, but just because they're the most wins. sound veteran team. They have the most. Yeah, yeah I like that. Exactly. Yeah, you're not wrong. That's the, the safe def- pick. The defense to back it up as well. We were talking about that that divisional odds a few weeks ago. Last time I was on, I remember they were still at pl- everybody's plus to win that division. So it might not be a bad bet to look into the New Orleans Saints to take home that division. Plus 130, I think they're at. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, any, I got any, them at plus 130. I did take that, actually. Derek Carr, the only quarterback with winning experience. So be interesting. We'll talk about that as we get closer. I do like the value on the on the Viking or the Viking the uh Falcons to win that division though, but I I'm going with the Saints. I like I'm just taking the Saints. I thought the same thing. I was like they should be at least like closer to even, but plus one thirty, I'll take it. And the Falcons are a sleeper team. I mean they could pop off and like nobody's business, especially with how bad the NFC they is. They could they have the highest ceiling and the like the lowest floor. They could be so good they could be pretty good or really bad. You think they have the lowest floor? I think lowest floor in the division's got to be the Bucks. It's got to be right. Bucks are definitely the lowest. I, th- I think yeah, they, they have the potential to win two games this year. But literally, all four teams have the potential to win the division. I don't think the Bucks really do. <sighs> Defense. I'd say the other. Th- I'd say the other three. Eh. They're not even good. None of them are actually good. So literally, no. Anybody. But the the Bucks don't have really have anything going for them. Defense. I think the Saints could be pretty good. They, they don't even have the best defense in the in the division. No, I don't think Who? so either. But I'm saying Bucks. like they they have they have championship pedigree on their defense. I mean, I take that into account yeah. a little bit. They had Tom Brady on the team, but the defense played well. Remember, he they won some games for him. Oh yeah, definitely. But uh, I, I don't know. That wasn't the backbone of that team. Shaq Barrett, Devin White, Levante, David Vita Vey. Those are a good front seven, at least, uh, especially against inexperienced. Uh, offenses but i don't expect much from them i don't ex- the the panthers are really weird team so many question marks coaching question marks um that scares me a bit the coaching but uh the falcons high ceiling but is Ritter good Derek carr i mean it's got to be Derek carr and the saints really right that's what i'm saying yeah it's gotta be gotta get yeah. Derek carr the defense is solid right solid defense out there Lattimore, demario davis uh you got a few other guys right i I personally am starting to think Bryce Young might not be that good. I haven't seen it. You got to – we'll revisit why? that week four. Yeah, like why? Just because he I think he's he in a – no, that he can't and see over I think he's line. in a tough situation. His line's not good either. And he so he's going to be him. in a tough situation from week one. Like Who's their ball carrier too? Chuba Hubbard. That rookie Bigsby. Kingsby. Did they draft him? I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Tank Bigsby. I believe is his name. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Panthers might have a tough year. But their they defense, have a good is defense up and coming. But... Brent, or yeah, Brian they have Burns, Burns Brian Burns, Jace and Horn. JC Horn. 
Puff, did you know on the outside, though, think about that Falcons defense a little bit. They have Jeff Okuda and AJ Terrell with Jesse Bates. That's a pretty nasty secondary. Grady Jarrett on the D-line. Yeah, and then I forget who. They have another dude on the D-line that I can't remember his name right now. Well, they have that linebacker who's really good. What's his name? Oh, we had one of our callers call into the show and bring him up. It was my uncle. He told me about it. He's like, uh, he's like, oh, you forgot him. Is it Deion Jones, the linebacker? Yeah, the, the, I was going to say, is he still there? Yeah. I didn't think he was still there. I believe he is. The Steelers play the Falcons tomorrow. Hold on. let me. Pull, I'm looking at their roster. Let me see if I can find it. But uh, on the other side of the ball, I know we hate on Kyle Pitts a lot on this podcast, but he has the potential. It's there. Drake London's really good, in my opinion. You have Bijan Robinson with Cordarell behind them and uh, LJR. I don't really know who their number two receiver is. Um, Might be the guy with the long last name. The Falcons now have Bud Dupree. Yeah, he's not bad. I don't know that. Yeah, Jeff Okuda, AJ Terrell, Jesse Bates. That's nasty. They have, a, Terrell, they have a, one of those sleeper cornerbacks that could be one of the best in the league. Grady Jarrett, and it's at Inech Kawu is the dude I was thinking of. I, I knew I was never going to be able to say that name. <laughs> It's crazy. But yeah, give me the Saints on the Bucks. We'll take it right there. Hit the Bucks with the Saints. Alrighty, boys. The Baltimore Ravens preseason win streak has officially come to an end, losing 29 to 28 to the Washington Commanders on Monday night. The Ravens win streak spanned back to 2015, something like 24 preseason games. Does that sound right? Something like that. What do you yeah, what are you yeah. guys thinking about this? And it fuck, and it fuck came to sh- an end of the sh- fucking the streak of the the streak killers, the Washington Commanders. Left hand up, they got it done again. They they took down my eleven and zero Steelers. They took down the eight and zero Eagles. They took down the twenty four and zero Ravens. the The Washington Commanders are the summer Super Bowl champions coming into this. I don't know if you guys saw them celebrating after the game. They were hyped to win that one. Uh they 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 truly acted like that kick was sending them to the playoffs. Uh, not into maybe week one. I don't even know if they have another regular season game left, but um, all vibes are high in Washington. New owner. You saw his handshake on Monday Night Football. That was the most awkward handshake thing I've ever seen in my life with Joe Buck. I don't know if any of you guys Joe saw Buck that. Have you seen the clip? He wasn't going for the handshake. He wasn't handshake. even going for a handshake. Yeah, he wasn't going for a handshake. And Josh Harris like looks at him, like reaches his hand out and just like shakes it and then realizes it was not, and then he puts his hands on his hips. That That's was too funny. Watch. But it's a brutal watch. Yeah, I don't know. The, the funniest part was when he went down on the field, like when they were about to win the game, he was down on the field. I'm like, do they, they really think this is like a playoff game? Yeah, that, I mean that's the that's the best they're gonna get this season. They're gonna win five games this year and just uh, figure out a, about that name for next season. But uh, I I hate I bet on the Ravens and this is just like punt the ball. It's fourth and twelve in your own end zone. I had it's take, preseason. I told you I I'm I was gonna say I told you I was like I liked Washington, but that one and a half was tough. As soon as I got that six and a half points, I loved it. Yeah, I mean it's kind of crazy how the uh, Commanders played their starters into the third quarter, like. You're just risking I did injury. say they were going to do that, though. I did say they were going to do that. Into I said the they're the only team that's been playing their starters nuts. through halftime. Yeah, that's nuts. Um, Josh Johnson held his own, though. That's kind of crazy. Um, tough loss, though. I mean, I was on it as well, Mackie. But you had to ride the streak. I, I got enough juice out of it, though, where it worked out, I guess. With that, boys, we go to ESPN. Stephen A. Smith made allegations on ESPN's first take talking about how wide receiver Stefan Diggs was not happy with his current situation in Buffalo. Diggs quickly took to Twitter to make the, to put those rumors to sleep, saying that he is Bill's mafia through and through. What are you guys thinking about Stephen this? Stephen A. Smith's just catching shots all over the he place really on uh, social media. Between Macy's this and the Lonzo dope. Ball thing. Yeah, and then did you see what Stephen A. Smith said this morning back to Lonzo? No, but I saw the he was MJ like Steph. he goes. What'd you say? I saw something about like it, um, MJ and Steph. Oh uh, yeah, MJ texted him and said Magic Johnson's the best point guard ever, not Steph Curry. But we'll we'll deal with that later. Um, so Steph or Stephen A. Smith said, uh, "Just I have a I have a screw in my knee, and you guys see me running around this studio. That doesn't mean I can go out there and play basketball." And they're like. He goes, standing up and down from a chair, sitting by the pool, does not mean you can play an NBA game. He goes, if you are healthy, let me see you running up and down a court or whatever. And, like, 
I mean, I kind of agree with him. Like Lonzo's saying he's healthy, he's healthy. Not, it's like no, he's yeah, not. Dude, he's just standing up. He's just saying that he he. Stephen A. said he cannot stand up out of a chair, and he showed that he clearly could do it. I mean, he didn't say he can go play in an NBA game. Well, that's I I, I mean. I, I don't know. I just think it's a funny story because Stephen A's catching shots from everything. And then the, the Stefan Diggs stuff, everyone's kind of saying, let me hear your sources. But then he said the same thing back to Stefan Diggs this morning, too. I saw it was like, all I'm saying is he said so he expressed feelings to people close to him and it got to me. And like, you know how Stephen A delivers it like a total asshole. He's yeah. like, it's not my fault, but this is just how it is. It's like, I mean, I, mean, he's I, re- I, I don't think it was. Go ahead. A, like, he, that's what he does. He reports news. I mean, he's not not going to say things that he hears about. It's, it's going to draw attention. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's nothing against him, but I don't know. I, I, I like Stephen A. Good stuff, boys. The Titans, Will Levis has oh, – this, oh, this is such a weird one. Will Levis has signed a lifetime deal with Hellman's Mayonnaise after being a big mayo and coffee drinker. I read that he doesn't actually do this, but he has publicly done it as a joke multiple times and sips the coffee without cringing. Just like takes the mayonnaise and just like the squirt bottle, squirts it in this coffee and drinks it. Not, uh, that's just whack. That's nasty. I mean, I feel like he's been planning this, uh, this tandem partnership for a while with the way he's going about it. Why else are you doing that? Exactly, right? It's funny. I think it's all good. Worked out. Works Seriously. out. I mean, he's not a starting quarterback, and he's getting a nice sponsorship right there. So can't complain. Mayo kind of creeps me out. So uh, I don't. I'm not a big fan of this. Yeah, me too. I would. Not a. You big know something? Fan. It's one of those things that you get on a. Sa- I, now that I'm older, if I get on a sandwich, I still eat it. I'm like, it's actually not that bad. But I never go out of my way to order. I it will never go out of my way to use oh, it. I like yep. mayo. Yep. I mayo like with mayo. on a ham and ham and cheese. Mm. Yeah, that sounds disgusting. Yeah. Hey, well, very good. Don't yuck my yum, bro. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm, more, I'm definitely more of a mustard guy. All righty. Up to Seattle, the Seahawks rookie wide receiver, JSN. I'm not going to try to say his name is out for three to four weeks thanks to today's wrist surgery. This injury comes at a tough time for the Ohio State product. Seahawks without their rookie wide receiver for the first few weeks. What are you guys thinking about this? Tough time. I was of the excited year for this to see to him and uh, yeah, I was excited to see him and Metcalf uh start the season out and see what they kind of could do with Geno Smith coming to this year, uh, uh, this Seattle team that no one had expectations for last year and um this year. I mean, I'm hearing people pick them to win the division, so I'm very excited to see how they start out. But um, yeah, I think it's a tough blow. Obviously, I was excited to see him him up there with Geno. But Ace, go ahead. Yeah, we were talking about this yesterday when it happened. We were saying now this really opens the door for Tyler Lockett to regain the spotlight that he always shines in. Um, however, I think this is just a tough spot for Jackson Smith and Jay. But I, I really hate to see this for a young guy because now you got to wonder: is this something that's going to linger all year? Um, he's missing the vital weeks of practice right before the season starts, learning the playbook, etching on his role as the number two or even number one pass catcher if he's their slot guy. But uh, yeah, hopefully this is something you can overcome pretty quickly. Yeah, terrible way to start your career in your rookie season. But uh, he's athletic and he's young enough to come back from this guy out of Ohio State. He knows he knows how to win. So I I think he'll be he'll come back stronger. I just hope it's not a nagging injury, especially the way Geno Smith plays football. He would have been a great uh, asset for the Seahawks to have. But that team is always dealing with so many injuries to the young guys. Remember Kenneth Walker the third last year, his rookie season dealing with injuries too. I mean. Maybe it's just uh, that Seattle air. Hand injury for a receiver, though. You hate to see it. Wrist injury, I should say. All righty. Let's get into our positional power ranking in the NFL. This week, we're excited to talk about our top five head coaches coming into this season. Who wants to get us rolling on this one? I can I can get us started here if, if we want to. I know mine... Um, there's a lot of honorable mentions I wish I could throw in there. I know I was talking to my brother before this. He's like, got to throw John Harbaugh in there. I'm like, no, I'm not, but he's a good coach. Um, so my top five, I'll start off with one honorable mention. I'll give it to my guy, Mike Vrabel. I think he's on the up, up come, uh, come up right there. He's got a tough team around him, but he still continues to find success. But getting into mine here, number five, Doug Peterson um, down in Jacksonville. Uh, already has a championship to his name. And look at what he's done with Trevor Lawrence in just one year. I think he's just going to continue to grow on his career. 
At number four, the only guy on my list without a Super Bowl title, but he's been there a few times, is Kyle Shanahan, one of the younger coaches in the league. I love the coaching tree that he has coming off of him and just the way he calls the game, an offensive mastermind. And look at what he's doing with that star-studded offense out in San Francisco. There's a reason they went and got him from Atlanta. Um, coming at number three, much to the Yinzer surprise, I have Mike Tomlin on the list. Um, Got to give a shout out to the Pittsburgh guy. Love the way that he coaches his team, a true players coach. Um, kind of like Pete Carroll, but in a different way, if you know what I'm saying. But I'll take him every time. Guys never had a losing record, I don't think. How can you name that anything else? Guys love playing for him. They always speak it, speak about it. And also he has a championship, so you really can't hate on that. At number two, um, people might have him at one right now because of recency bias, but Andy Reid, I know that he has Patrick Mahomes, but he's in the Super Bowl year in and year out. He's going to be for a while, and uh, he has a great coaching tree as well. Been in the league forever, been doing it forever, so give that guy a cheeseburger and he'll get you a ring. He's my number two, and at number one, I got to have the GOAT, Bill Belichick. Don't even need to say anything else. Best coach of all time. Pretty long, but that, that's my list there. I don't know what you guys think about that or have to say about yours. I'll go next. Uh, yeah, that's a good list. Um, yeah, I'll slide in here next. So I, I, I have a pretty similar list. I have an honorable mention that I'm going to slide in here to Mike Vrabel. I wanted to put him in here, but um, the the one that I ended up putting it for was who I kind of was forgetting and ended up having to have him throw him in there with the uh, Super Bowl in the recent couple years. So number five, I do have Kyle Shanahan in there. Uh, a lot of people are going to have him, could have him higher. I see why. Uh, they're what he's done with the 49ers offense over the past couple of years, uh, what he does with what he has to work with. We've seen what he did with Purdy last year and what he's done with all the different guys in, in San Francisco. So uh, Kyle Shanahan, number five. Number four, I do have Sean McVay. Uh, that's the one I was talking about, the Super Bowl championship with the LA Rams. We're the young co- one of the young coaches that does have the ring already. So I'm going to go with Sean McVay at number four. My guy, Mike T at number three. Uh, Belichick two, Andy Reid one. I do have Andy Reid at number one for the consistent uh, fact that he did it with the Eagles. He did it with the Chiefs. And uh, now he's all the NFC championships, all the AFC championships. He's just consistently there every year. So uh, recency bias, I do have to put Andy Reid there for the top five coaches coming into this season. Tough. We have a very similar list. Um, I'm going to go with... uh... As an honorable mention, McDaniel down in in uh, Miami. I think I mean he's young, but he's kind of in the same boat as Kyle Shanahan. Just haven't haven't really proved it as much, and he's going to be there for a while. I think so. I want to. I just want to shout him out a little right there before he can get in my top five. But uh, number five, I'm going to go Sean McVay. Uh, like you said, uh, recent recent Super Bowl right there kind of puts him in my top five. You got young guy really knows what he's doing with that team. Number four, I'm going Kyle Shanahan. Uh, in my opinion, this guy is probably the top two smartest people in NFL history. He knows the game better than pretty much anyone, and uh, he still has a lot of more, a lot more years under him as well. Number three, I'm going to go Mike Tomlin as well. It just proves year in and year out that he can't have a losing record. Um, he's got a few Super Bowls over there as well. I think he has more than one, but um, he just he just has the one. Okay, well he he can prove that he can win, and he's never had a losing record, so. There's that. Two AFC championships. He won one. With the, we beat the Cardinals. He lost to the Packers. Right, right. Um, number two, I'm going to go Bill Belichick. Uh, got to get, gotta give uh, the recency bias to Andy Reid, number one. But, um, yeah, two, two goats right there, Andy Reid and Bill Belichick. Mackie, we, we literally have the same list. I just gave McVay the edge with the ring. Yeah, exactly. That's why I said I was like, it's basically the same as mine. Mine's very, very similar. Five, Kyle Shanahan. Four, Sean McDermott. Three, Mike Tomlin. Two, Billy Belichick. And one, Andy Reid. Just got to give uh, credit where credit's due to those top two. Can't go wrong. Bill Belichick's do you great. Me, I mean, do you know how many rings Bill Belichick has? Yeah, Tom Brady has seven. I think Bill Belichick has like 11 or 13. I, dude, I loved Bill Belichick. I really did. But he has not proved one thing since Tom Brady has left. He hasn't even, he has even, he hasn't even won a playoff game. Yeah, I mean, couldn't you say that about Andy Reid with Patrick Mahomes? No. But he did it with the Eagles, he won, too. He won, he won playoff games with the Eagles. Did he have a Super Bowl, though? He went to the Super Bowl with the Eagles. Does Phil Belichick have a head coaching Super Bowl with, without Tom coaching. Brady? No, not head coach. He's only head coaching been in New England. But that's over 20-something years. It's crazy. 
Whenever you have these arguments, it's always funny because people are like, oh, Brady had Belichick. And then when you have the other argument, it's like, Belichick had Brady. It's well, so funny. Well, Brady, went, Brady left and won, and Belichick no, I know. was left. But, no, but you should hear the Brady. That's what people use as the Brady argument, too. I think it's a combination of both. Yeah, definitely. I'm not taking anything really away from Bill Belichick, but. What was I going to say? Uh, some other name. I'm surprised you guys have Sean McDermott up there. My brother said that to me as well, but I'm like, what does he won? Um. I don't know. I think they should go further with the talent they have. I think he's a talent-driven team. Uh, I'm surprised no one else gave Doug Peterson love, but you guys do hate the Eagles, I guess. Is that why? <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, you can definitely put him up there, but there's also... I mean, you can also put... I, I wrote down in my notes... I said Mackie, I, I'm happy you said it might be Daniel, because I, I wrote in my notes some up-and-coming guys. I just want to call it three of them. I think Brian Dayball, really good head coach as well. Um, great offensive coordinator. What he did with that Giants team, I thought they were dog shit, and they went to the playoffs and won a game. Um, Mike McDaniel, and then I like Matt Lafleur up in Green Bay. I'm eager to see what he can do without Aaron Rodgers in the way. Yeah, I'm a big McDaniel fan. I love him. He's a Shanahan tree, right? It's crazy. I like those lists right there. Um, I I value the winning and championship pedigree a lot, though. Um, that's why John Harbaugh and Pete Carroll, those guys. I, I might put the honorable mention. I went with the variable because I like the way he coaches. Players coach like Tomlin. But personally, I think Carroll and Harbaugh are probably ahead of him because they, he has that, they both have those rings and they're always in the hunt. Harbaugh Pete Carroll is definitely right outside for me as well. Especially with, look at what he did last year without Russell exactly, Wilson. Yeah, And yeah. he was a Patriots head coach for a while. He's been doing it for, forever. He brought a new mantra to coaching in the NFL. He's, he's the true, not like Vrabel and, Tomlin where he's like a dog and they're basically players that are coaching but he's like builds a great atmosphere there Harbaugh too I mean look at he coached a transition between Joe Flacco this white pocket passer and Lamar Jackson a new era running quarterback and he's had success with both that's nuts to me bro the Phillies are about to fucking come back again this is ridiculous oh my god it's 5-5 Bryce Harper right here. Yeah, I'm watching it. Bryce Harper's so good. Bang. All righty, boys. Good stuff. Next week, we'll wrap up this segment with our top five teams heading into the 2023 NFL season. We're just uh, just 15 days away from kickoff on Thursday. Real excited. <laughs> Are you struggling with a lack of access to captivating entertainment and media? Are you faced with constant judgment and ridicule from friends and family for your inability to respond appropriately to sensitive situations? If this sounds like you, you might be suffering from being emotionally dead inside. But it's not too late to make a change. One Nothing Podcast is a newly available treatment for being dead inside. Taken just once every two weeks, one nothing could make a world of difference. By combining carefully measured dark humor to the amazing original formula of grisly fatalities, one nothing podcast has successfully entertained thousands of people suffering from death inside. And with access across all podcast platforms, treatment has never been more readily available. But don't trust my word. Here's some real world testimonials from a few of our listeners currently undergoing treatment. From consistent doses of One Nothing Podcast, my posture has greatly improved due to being kept on the edge of my seat. The One Nothing Podcast comes on, everybody be like, shut the f*** up. I be quiet, but when the episode's over, I be talking again. Oh my gosh, buddy. I used to be on so many medications for blood pressure. And then I listened to One Nothing Podcast's episode on Kitty Genovese, moved into an apartment on my own, and haven't needed it since. That one really got my blood pumping. You know, listening to One Nothing Podcast, I'm I'm not constipated anymore. I'm just full of shit. So what's stopping you from great entertainment? One Nothing Podcast is not intended for all audiences. Listeners under 18 years of age should obtain permission from your parent or guardian before downloading. Tell your therapist if you're predisposed to whining, complaining, leading podcasts poorly, being overall combative, or being easily offended, as One Nothing Podcast might not be right for you. So stop letting great content pass you by. 
Talk to your therapist today to see if One Nothing Podcast is right for you. Let's jump over to the NBA. The NBA is fining James Harden $100,000 for the comments he made last week at his basketball camp in China in regards to Daryl Morey and the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, does anybody have what he said? He just said I said it, it last week. It was like the, right. he'll never play for a team run by him or whatever. That's yeah, we tough, were talking yeah. about it last week, but they just announced that he got fined for it. So uh, tough care. scene still probably. Yeah, I don't think it's a big deal a, for him, but uh, he does $100,000 at those strip clubs. <laughs> yeah, I don't, baby. I, I don't think that's hurting him too much, but yeah, I don't think we'll be seeing him back in Philly personally. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting because they have all the they have the power over him. He's, I mean, like I said, if if he doesn't play this year, they can hold him from becoming a free agent or something. I heard on the with something that's in the new NBA CBA. So a uh, little tough situation over there for Harden and Philly. I found out why he was mad too. Um, Daryl Morey said if you sign, if you opt in your player option, then he'll be traded immediately. And then he opted in, and they said you're not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> get played all righty that's all we got here in the nba this week Let's jump over to the mlb start us off i got our power rankings for this week week of august 21st 2023 at number five the tampa bay rays number four the texas rangers number three the baltimore orioles number two the los angeles dodgers and number one the atlanta braves Dodgers in it too. Yeah, very similar to our last week's list. Dodgers moving up from the third spot. Orioles moving down to that third spot. What are you guys thinking? Pretty good rankings this week as we get closer to the NFL and other seasons. It's crazy how consistent the Atlanta Braves are, huh? Best team in the league lineup. Lineup doesn't have a weak spot, so it doesn't surprise me how consistent they can be. Especially, what about Mackie? You really wanted those M's to get in after they had a hot week. Um, the M's, Rangers, and Astros all could be in there within one game of each other. I think a half a game even. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's why you you kind of got to give it to, to the division leader at the moment. But, I mean, by this time next week, I think we'll see either the Astros or the Mariners in that one spot. The Rangers are playing some bad baseball right now. and I, don't, I definitely don't see them in our top five for next week's power rankings. It's crazy too. Aren't the Twins uh really securing that um AL Central? Yeah, but they're still only like six games. They're three games over. Yeah, there's no way they're really cracking it. Do we see? Try and think from a Twins perspective. Any what's what's their recipe for success if they get to the postseason? Get healthy and then get really good starts from Joe Ryan, Ober, and Sonny Gray. Yeah, I mean they their 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 bullpen needs to carry a lot of, of workload because they really don't have the depth in the pitching. Um, I guess you can say those three guys can get the job done, but they're definitely all sitting at sub three five ERAs, n- nothing crazy. But um, this team just needs to hit a run at at the right time. Do pull like what the Phillies did last year, even though the Phillies are even a better team than this twi- Twins team is. But I mean, you need guys like Carlos Correa who you're paying all this money to to step up. Guys playing terrible baseball all season. Um, you need you need these Byron guys- Buxton to get off the injured list. Yeah, exactly. You need that him him back and stuff. You just need these names to step up a little. They're going to find their way into the playoffs in such a weak division, but uh, it matters what they can do with it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch play out. But I know we have some more points to go over some of these top teams uh, with not much movement in the power rankings this week. Good stuff, boys. My next point here in the MLB is Eddie Rosario becomes the seventh player of the year years of this year's Atlanta Braves to reach the 20 home run threshold as the Braves continue to rack up the accolades this season. Those Braves just continue to pound on the rest of this league. What are you guys thinking? They are oh, it's currently locked. I can't see the odds, but they're currently leading the leaderboard for to win the World Series. What are you guys thinking here? Yeah, we just kind of talked about how stacked this lineup is, and seven players to reach 20 home runs is, I don't even know if the Mets have two, but uh, it's pretty crazy that a team like this is just performing so well, all clicking at the same time. They can have three guys have a bad night, top three guys have a bad night, and they can still put up six runs every night. So um, it's just this team is one of the best teams we've seen in uh, recent history. 
like Mackie said, that lineup's so complete. Even with like interchangeable parts, you have Travis Dearnard, and he can play for Sean Murphy, the All Star, um, when he's not so hot, or give your catchers days off. Um, I know the pitching, they're digging deep into the system to get some young arms with some injuries, but that hitting, there's constant pressure throughout the lineup, night in and night out. That's why you're seeing so many guys with 20 plus home runs, because every time you're up to pitch, you're a guy that just came out of the pen. You got two guys on in scoring position with no outs, because you have names like how many all stars they have this year? Seven, something like that. So that makes these these players around them even better, and they come up in clutch spots, and they're getting the job done, feeding off the energy that Ronald Acuna uh, gives to the whole lineup. Like we keep saying, that Braves team is at the top of our power rankings each and every week. They're there for a reason. Next one here, Ellie De La Cruz has 10 homers and 20 steals through 64 games this season, the quickest ever to reach that mark. Sitting just a half a game out, can the young Reds team get to the postseason? Curious to hear what you guys think. Uh, yes. I don't, I don't think they get in. Who do you think? I, get, who do you think edges them out? Uh, I think the Phillies and the Cubs will definitely be in. I I kind of think the Giants, but they're just playing terrible baseball right now. The Reds, beginning of, halfway through the se- season, even at the All Star break, I think they maybe had a chance, but. I mean, their true show, their, their true colors are showing. De La Cruz is still having a pretty good season. He just doesn't have enough quality at bats. These guys are just – they're big names that just aren't having enough quality at bats. And over over a span of time, it's just not going to work out for a team like that. Um, NL, the NL race is – it's tight, but it's kind of weak. All the all these teams are like four, three games over 500. They don't really need to be winning every night to ha- still have a chance. So I'm not going to count them out just yet, but I think a few of these teams could definitely squeak out in front of them. Yeah, Mac, it's funny that you say the Giants because I think we went to this topic just before the All-Star break started and uh, you guys both lean towards the Giants making it. I'm going to stick with the Reds. I think they're electric. And like you said, you don't you only have to play just above 500 baseball to get in with the landscape of the wild card race right now. And I think they can do that. They have enough pop power throughout the lineup. Uh, Spencer Steer, Matt McLean, Ellie De La Cruz, uh, they brought up CES, but they have like Guys, a lot of guys that can pop off when needed. I know their pitching is not too great, but I'm not high on the Giants. I think the Marlins fade out a little bit. I'm not even the, that high on the Cubs, but um, yeah, I think the, the Phillies are the yeah. They're another team. They're in that same boat. Like I'm higher on them than I am the Giants, but I know they're a little bit further back. Um, not anymore. They're ahead. They're really? in the wildcard spot right now. They're eight. They're eight and two in their last ten. So they're yeah, playing I, good baseball. Remember when we were talking about them earlier in the year? I think they were, they they might have already went through that low stretch. Hopefully they don't hit another and they'll get, find themselves there. But I think they have more uh, potential than those teams listed. I like the Reds and the Diamondbacks after the Phillies to get into the wild card. You don't have any love for this Cubs team? No, not not too much. Not I just high think on they have the best. I think they have the best roster up up and down out of these like bubble teams right here. They're the most veteran Who? of them, the Cubs. Yeah, I like the Cubs to get in. I think the Cubs. I I think the Cubs will sneak in. They have the pitch, the best pitching out of all of them. I'd say too. You think? And uh, Diamondbacks are carried by Zach Gallen, so maybe you could say them with their backups. But you know, Steele has like the lowest ERA in the league, and then you have like, um, Italian stinks. Yeah, Ty- uh, Assad. He's okay. And Strom- St- I don't think Stroman's healthy right Stroman's now. Stroman's done he was- for the year. Is he? I think so. He's been out for deep, too. Let yeah, you're, you're riding the coattails of Steel right now. He's got like a sub-2 ERA, so. It'd be nice if they get to a one-game playoff and they can roll him out, though. Yeah, he's second, second highest ERA, or second lowest ERA in the league behind Blake Snow. He's out yeah. indefinitely. It's from the fractured rib or something. Tyon needs to definitely pick it up. Yeah, for sure. Good stuff, boys. Another point here in the MLB. Julio Rodriguez becomes the second player in MLB history with four consecutive four-hit games. Very impressive feat there. You guys got any comment on that one? Yeah, guy's pretty good. Yeah, uh, he had another chance to hit a hit a, or he had another pretty big moment today to hit a grand slam i think or bases loaded or i think he had runners on the corner i can't remember and i think he struck out so no nah, uh, yeah that stretch 
Is that what it was? Yeah, I did. I wasn't really watching. I just saw him up the bat, and then I turned away because it was during when I was working. But, um, and then what was the the stretch? Was this during the stretch? Whenever I was seeing the graphic that he was literally outproducing the Yankees for like a four game stretch. He's well. He was doing way more than that. He was batting like seven seventy six. <laughs> yeah. Did, do you know what I mean? Did you see the graphic? It was like more, in the last four hits. games. Like 17, Rodri- Seventeen hits in the last. Yeah, you know which one I'm talking Yankees about. Yeah, seventeen hits or something like that. Yeah, it was crazy. I was Yankees. like, damn. Yeah, I guess this guy's pretty good. Yankees are just terrible, man. Mariners, Mackie, you're on that Mariners train. They're coming back. I'm high on them, dude. They have a good roster. They just strike out too much, and they're they're figuring it out. I think I think these Astros are catching their stride, though. Yeah, and at the end of the day, if you're going to go neck and neck with two teams playing their best, you're going to give it to the Astros. That's why I just have to hope the Astros kind of fall off a bit. Last point I have here in the MLB is do we think the Tampa Bay Rays can hang on to a playoff spot with the pending Wander Franco situation and Shane McClanahan out for the remainder of the season? Two big pieces to the Tampa Bay Rays as they fall uh, down our power rankings throughout the season. What are you guys thinking as we gear up for MLB playoffs in about uh, two months here, a month here? I'm looking at their schedule right now. I mean, yeah, they have to play Ace. They got to play your Red Sox, and outside of their division, they don't have too many, uh, too many matchups that really scare me too much. So I don't, I don't know, Mackie. What do you think? Is Tampa Bay going to hold on here? I'm looking at their schedule right now. Just the end to end the month of August, they have uh, obviously the Ro- Rockies tonight. They're winning Rockies tomorrow. Then they get three with the Yankees. Then they go to Miami, and then Cleveland, Boston. Then they get Seattle. Minnesota, like none of those teams other than really Boston and Seattle kind of scare me too much. Yeah, I don't I don't think they'll, they'll fall out of that spot. They have five games on who's right behind them. Uh, the Astros, are, or, they, or they have four games on the Astros, five on the Mariners who are sitting in that last spot right now. I don't, if they fell out after starting the season 27 and three, that's, that'll be pretty detrimental. And Could you not, imagine? Yeah, that, that'd be one of the worst fall, like fall parts of, from what I from what I can remember, at least, um, but I, the team's still good. I think they'll definitely make the playoffs. I just don't think that they're very dangerous once you get there. Yeah, yeah so I that's agree. a good way to put it. Even though when we least expect it, they usually pop off. You know, what I mean, like Randy Rosario, postseason player. Those young guys that can come up, if they can get there, they can make some noise and they can scare a team. But I don't know. They got to stick around. They got to stick around. They, they keep winning games. If the season ended today, though, they'd be playing the Twins in the first round, which is a good matchup for them. Great they matchup. can win a playoff yeah. series. We know what that what that lineup can do. So they feed off you know, momentum too. So if they yeah. could grab a series, you never know how deep. So I'm saying whoever whoever gets the Twins is a pretty decent matchup. I feel like out of those wild card teams, definitely. Same thing as like the Bucks last year. Cowboys got drawn the Bucks. It was like a, a walk in the park. Yeah, that's why I like the NBA better, where it's just one through eight seeds. The top eight teams make the playoffs. The Twins should not be in the playoffs for winning. Being four, three games over five hundred. All those teams in the in the AL trying to make it in. You, you got to snub out the f- f- Blue Jays who are fourteen games over. Red Sox are only six right now, but they'll probably finish a little better than that. I'm watching. I just turned on the Rays game. They're the last leg of this parlay. I need. Randy hit the ding. I don't know. I took Brewers, Reds, and Rays when. Brewers were tied. Rays, Reds were up one. And I just Rays, Rays obviously didn't start. Judge homered one nothing Yanks. One second here. <sighs> All right. Damn, and just like that, you can get the Nationals a plus two twenty instead of one twenty. All righty, let's start off our college football chat with some conference winners. Let's go through like the big five here. So, um, why don't we start with the ACC? We got Clemson coming in as the favorite at plus one forty-five. Florida State right behind them at plus one fifty. Louisville plus a thousand, and North Carolina plus a thousand. North Carolina State plus two thousand. So, pretty big spread there. Clemson, Florida State at the top of the ACC. What are your guys' comments on that one? 
Yeah, so obviously coming into those odds, uh, you have the two pretty much favorites, uh, pretty even odds at 145 and 150, what I'm looking at with Clemson and Florida State. Florida State has pretty good expectations coming into this year, and Clemson obviously lost a lot both in the draft and as well as uh, in the transfer portal. A lot of guys on their way out from both the ACC and just Clemson as well. Uh, so Clemson, they lost guys like Ugalele, I think is how you say his name, a quarterback going to Oregon State. So um, I, I like Florida State. I would like to see a little bit of a higher number. I was pretty surprised to see it this close. Um, haven't really looked at these numbers in a couple of weeks, but to see them at plus 150, um, I feel like people are going to be just kind of taking Clemson for the name. But uh, I like the I like that value you get on Florida State with uh with the experience and the young guys that they're getting in the transfer portal this year. So um, I'll, I'll go with Florida State to win the ACC. I don't know I don't know the last time they've done it, so that's that could be a little bit of a kind of a I don't know not necessarily a bold statement with those odds, but I don't know necessarily the last time Florida State won the ACC because it has been Clemson now primarily run the past couple of years. Jameis. I'm, I feel like they did might have done it once, snuck one in there another time, but yeah, you're probably right. That was probably the what last was that, time. Was it 2012 or 2014? He was a Mariota. There's some value 14, on North Carolina though. There, I'm telling you, Drake May is going to be fucking really good. There's they just don't have that good of a team. If he could carry them, North Carolina at 10 to one is a decent decent value pick to win this ACC. Alrighty, that's good stuff in the ACC. Let's jump over to the Big Ten. My home conference here. Let's start off. Ohio State leading the board at plus 170. Michigan right behind them at plus 175. My Penn State and the Lions at plus 550. Wisconsin behind them at plus 750. And Iowa to round out the top five at plus 1,200. Ohio State and Michigan neck and neck there, plus 170, plus 175 respectively. What do you guys think's happened in the Big Ten this year? Mac, I, you're an Ohio State guy. You like you like the Buckeyes this year? I I don't I don't know, dude. I don't know because obviously with uh, Stroud leaving, you never want to trust a quarterback coming in uh, on his first year. But I like Penn State this year, dude. I think they have a really good chance. They have good odds. I mean, if they were sitting at 175 like Michigan and Ohio State was, I probably wouldn't say. But with the value, I think they're right there with Michigan and Ohio State. Um, the uncertainties in Ohio State this year. Obviously, they're going to be a top five team still, but. You know, a new quarterback doesn't always mean a winning, a, like a, a winning team like they're supposed to be, like a third, number three team in the country. They could drop a game or two here and there, and it's, it'll it'll pull them out of the hunt. So, uh, I don't like the yeah. value on the plus one fifty or the value on the plus one seventy five for Michigan, but I do, I I do like the value on Penn State with what do you say plus five hundred, five fifty. So I I I'm right there with you. I think. I, I just don't think there's going to be enough going for Ohio State. I think it's, again, it's the easy pick to take them as a as a recency bias on what they've done in the past. But what, between the value at Penn State at five, 550, plus 550, or what Michigan has done with their running game and what they have uh, coming into this year, I think if I am taking one of those two favorites, I'm going to probably go Michigan. Just because I think they're going, to, they're going to be the better team coming into this year, but I like Penn State at 550. That's probably my true pick. I like their quarterback. I think it's Drew Aller, I think is how you say his last name. Not the biggest James Franklin fan. I've said that before, but uh, I think Penn State, they got a lot of guys back. They got a couple guys in the transfer portal. So um, I, I think big things coming out of Happy Valley this year. Coming in the season, ranked seventh overall. First week is uh, a 20 and a half point favorite against my Mountaineers. So um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Jesse, do you know where the Ohio State game is? Not off the top of my head, but let me look. I'm it's in, it's in Columbus play. this year. Um, uh, it's in Columbus? I think it yeah, is. Yeah, last year was in Ohio well, State. They're probably last Michigan year was in Penn State. Home. Yeah, Michigan's, Michigan's in... Mi- yeah, Michigan in uh, Happy Valley. Happy Valley and, and Penn Ohio State's, State's going to have a tough time going into the shoe and winning a, winning a game. I would Very agree. Tough. I would agree. I think they're better off playing in the big house than playing in the shoe. But, you got. I mean, you got to win the game at home. You got you, you to gotta beat Michigan at home. It all depends how early on it is in the season. That's all that matters. It's uh, October twenty first. It's there. That's perfect. Seventh. That's game. perfect. It's not November, right, December. In the shoe. No, in Ohio State. Yeah, in the shoe. Yeah, Sorry. Michigan, Penn State at Ohio State is when. October twenty first. No, yeah, dude, I think you're better yeah, off playing Ohio State towards the end of the season. When they're already like nine and zero. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, getting, I them, getting them early is is. Not what you want to see. 
Well, let's keep rolling through these college football conference winners. The next up is the Big 12. The leaders in that are Texas at plus 100, Oklahoma behind them at plus 350, Kansas State at plus 500, Texas Tech at plus 1,000, and TCU rounding out the top five at plus 1,600. So big spreads I, there. I don't Texas have a fa- just well ahead. What are you thinking of? Yeah, I don't have a fancy pick here. I think this is the year Texas actually kind of does something with Quinn Ewers and uh, all the, the they get all the big recruits every year, the, all the five stars. So I think this is the year Texas finally does something before they go down to the SEC. Maybe, but you you're crazy if you bet on them at plus one hundred. No, I wouldn't take that plus one hundred. No, but that, I'm telling you, I wouldn't take any of these other teams at that I, price personally. I don't love Kansas State at five hundred. Oklahoma is not going to be that great for three fifty odds, and I mean, if anything, I'd try to reach on like a Texas Tech at ten to one. TCU at sixteen hundred. That's a good. Maybe reach. at WVU at fifteen 15, plus fifteen thousand. Yeah, that plus fifteen thousand to win three <laughs> games. <laughs> No, I, I just I, I think Texas will find a way to blow it. I don't think Oklahoma Cincinnati be very first good year this in the year. Big Twelve. What'd you say? I said Cincinnati first year in the Big Twelve plus UCF, ten thousand. First year in the Big Twelve. No, Texas will probably. Oh, yeah, win, I didn't even I think, think about find that. A way to blow it too. Alrighty, next league up is the Pac-12. USC leading that board at plus one ninety five. Oregon behind them at plus three ten. Washington right behind them at plus 320, Utah plus 550, and Oregon State plus 1,100. What are we thinking coming out of the Pac-12 this year? USC just going to take the cake? This has to be a trap, right? They're coming off I Caleb Williams. I think it is, but I'll, I'll, I'll fall into it. Just give me the one with the best quarterback. Is, I, is, I like USC. What is, it, is Oregon supposed to be that good this year? I mean, Caleb Williams just won a Heisman, and now he's coming back to a pretty weak conference. I didn't think Oregon was all USC that also. Year. USC also Caleb Williams lost his two number one receiver, his number one and number two receiver. And be a Heisman quarterback in college football. I mean, he's still favorited to win the Heisman as well. I like Caleb Williams. Yeah, I, think I, I I like USC. I'll take USC at that price. I'll, I'll fall into the trap with that one if it is a trap. Game's got to be in Oregon. Yeah, probably you're right. It seems a little too easy, but that's one of the ones I, at that price that that's worth taking. Alrighty, let's hit the SEC to round out our Power 5. Georgia is the favorite here. Our first minus odds, minus 115 for them. Alabama right behind them, plus 300. LSU plus 450. Tennessee plus 1400. With Texas A&M also at plus 1400. What are we thinking here? SEC Georgia, also the national championship odds leader at plus 220. What are you guys thinking about this one? Bama for the value. I would never take a conference winner at minus just because of how many things can go wrong throughout the season. But if you can get Bama at plus plus 300 to win a conference, I don't care what they have going on this year. They have Nick Saban. They have the best recruiting class. Give me, give me Bama plus 300. Yeah. Um, it's That's tough because Georgia's far and away the better team in this in this situation. That's why they're getting that line. Um, I'm huge on Carson Beck and uh, Georgia coming into this year. Obviously, I think a lot of people are for the back-to-back national champion reasons. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's a good spot to take uh, Alabama or even LSU at this spot at 450. But um, Georgia's going to win the SEC, in my opinion. All righty. Why don't we jump right into the national championship odds here? Top five are as followed. Georgia plus 220, Alabama plus 600, Ohio State plus 700, Michigan plus 850, LSU plus 1200, USC plus 1500, and Clemson plus 1800. I went a little past the top five there just to give us a little more outlook. But do we see anybody other than the normal, you know, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State winning the national championship? LSU is good value of plus 1200. I was gonna say LSU, Michigan's not bad at eight to one, but they blow it. Like I just can't take a future on Georgia plus two twenty to win the national title. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. But like I said, their schedule they're gonna be twelve and zero. They just have to win the SEC championship, win the first round, and they're in the national title game. Like they have to win two games against legit teams. I don't know. 
it's not exciting, but they're going to be there. Uh, just if you can get Georgia at 220 in the national title game, though, like <laughs> you're going to love that. But you're waiting all year on a plus 220 future. It's tough. Uh, I, I agree. I think LSU has good value. Michigan has good value, but um, I, I don't know. It's tough to say they three P, but I, I think it's very likely they do. All righty, let's run through uh, some of these Heisman odds here. The Heisman Trophy for this year, leading the pack, Caleb Williams at plus 500, Jaden Daniels at plus 1,100, Quinn uh, Ewers, I think that's how you say it, at plus 1,300, Carson Beck plus 1,400, Jordan Travis plus 1,400 to round out the top five. Caleb Williams going for uh, two Pete. What are we thinking, guys? I. Uh- I like the value on, obviously, I just said, I'm big on Carson Beck at Georgia. The fr- I think he's a freshman or sophomore coming into this year. I'm big on him. I like the value there at 14-1, to and I also like the value on Quinn Ewers at 13-1. to uh, So those are the two that I'd be taking. Obviously, I, I, I'm big on Caleb Williams, and I think they win the Pac-12, but the value on Carson Beck and Quinn Ewers at 13-14-1 and to is crazy. So uh, those those would be my two picks there. Alrighty, that's a, we got a lot of good stuff to look forward to as the college football season is quickly approaching, starting just here around the corner. Make sure to uh, keep an eye out for any plays that we have as we go into the college football weekends each and every week. So UFC news here: Suga Sean O'Malley knocked out uh, Ali Jama. I don't know Ali Jamain. I think Al Jermaine. Al Jermaine. knocked out Al Jermaine Sterling at UFC 292 to capture his first ever belt as he is now the current bantweight champion of the world. The highly anticipated bout lived up to the expectations inside the TD Garden in Boston is now the great, new, the great news for the sports moving forward. What are we thinking here, Ace, at home for you? I know you're you know, getting more into the UFC than most of us. What are you thinking? I thought that was a great fight, and uh, I was hyped. I was on Sugar Show forever since this was announced. I was looking forward to this fight all summer and uh, knocked him out in the second round, had some great... A great first round, very tactical. I mean, he was just like showing off that footwork and throwing so many fakes that probably made Sterling not want to wait to just attack. And what he did in the second round left his face wide open. Sugar Show knock him out. I know Mac, you rode that too. Plus two hundred five. I got that. That's nice. Yeah, that was a crazy fight. I was at a I was at a bar where every single person had Sugar. Every, everybody bet him. So uh, when I'm not kid- when- I'm not kidding. I don't know anyone that took Aljamain Sterling. Yeah, seriously. I, I know one guy that does. My buddy trains at his gym with him in Long Island. So he he was devastated by that loss, but I don't think he was too shocked. Quick. I was surprised to see him at that big of an underdog. Like I, I didn't watch the fight, and I'm obviously I- I'll watch the big was- UFC fights. That was one I wanted to watch. I was just out, and that they didn't have it on, but um, I didn't take it. But yeah, that's obviously I I don't know much about Aljamain Sterling, but. The value on uh, on O'Malley there to get his first belt was crazy. He was injured. I'm sure the I'm, I'm sure people knew that. Sterling had Sterling had so many like previous fights against big names though that he won though he took out Peter Yan twice. I mean, and if it went to the ground at all, O'Malley was losing that thing. But he did a great job to stay up. I mean, you saw even before he knocked him out, he fell down early in the second round, and then he comes back up with a knockout punch. But even when he was clenched in the first round, he didn't go down to the mat, and that was the biggest thing, and it was key that he got that knockout punch in early on. He he kept his distance and uh, just waited for his time and um, found 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 an opening and just laid him out, and it was over from there. That was huge. It was funny because that was his first big moment, like first big stage on the UFC, um, first title fight for him, and uh, he looked very poised and comfortable, and he owned the moment, and he's one of those guys that looks like he's going to be in the spotlight for a while. I don't know if you guys saw. He wants to headline a fight um, in the winter with Conor with McGregor. Mc- McGregor, that'd be something to watch for sure. Yeah, I was, he was on. He was on McAfee yesterday, and they were talking about that. Yeah, I love Ben against McGregor. So if I can get O'Malley on one card and McGregor on the other, I mean, I feel like everybody, even non UFC people, are going to tune in as the sport continues to grow. Do you see? He also wants to knock out Gervonta Davis. He goes, he's so little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. He goes, they go, would it be a boxing match? He goes, oh, obviously. Like, being like, yeah, those <laughs> those guys won't come over to our sport. Yeah, no way. The kicks that O'Malley can throw, too. Yeah, Gervonta Davis's legs don't even go that high. I love seeing the thing that says, for, like, 10 years ago or however long ago, it was like Sean O'Malley shaved his eyebrow for 50 bucks. Now he's 
bantamweight champion of the world. Crazy. He got the bag. All righty. We got one more point here in the soccer world because we're just a huge soccer podcast. Lionel Messi and Inter Miami took home the League's Cup this past weekend as they defeated Nashville SC in penalties after neither team could crack the 1-1 tie. Naturally, Messi scored like he has in every game with the club to date. His 10 goals this tournament led the tournament, and they awarded him best player. So Messi just doing it again and again and again every time we talk about him. It's just more goals, more stuff here in the U.S. Any comment on that, guys? They played tonight. I just want to say half. Like, they played tonight. How, how Make sure often you get it in. have we been saying this before he even came to America? Messi to score, Miami to win. Messi to score, Miami to win. Dude, that the when they tied the one game, I was pissed. What was it against? Uh, I think it was Nashville. They tied or Philadelphia. They tied one one. But dude, the one I got it. It was plus one sixty five. Him to score and them to win. They won four nothing. It was like not even close. <laughs> It's crazy the effect he had on that team, and they were like. And he scores the first ranking. goal every time. If I could bet first goal instead of any time, I'm just about to just start switching that. He's plus two. He scores first. first goal. Dang, I might. Oh I might my have god, to Yanks are up six nothing. No wonder how uh, they give him all that money to go there, though. Like they get people like us talking about it, and the guy literally scores every game. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a. I mean, it's electric. My brother just moved down to Fort Lauderdale and he said like, I asked him because he works for Publix and that's like, remember whenever he was like spotted in a Publix, mm-hmm. just like grocery shopping. I was like, I asked my brother if he heard about that. He was like, yeah, as soon as that picture released, we got like a massive email. I'm like, I'm like, dude, that's just who he is. Like, cause my brother's not huge into sports. I'm like, he is the largest athlete with the biggest following in the world right now. Probably. Yeah. You're not wrong. I'm like, he just comes to America and he's like, yeah, I'm just going to take over here and set up shop for a little bit get in the bag to do it you see that that island they designed for him yeah the, that's the saudis coming back for him they want him back they see how they see what he's doing they're like what's us paying him oh we can quadruple that times 10 mls just growing we'll just by build the, the second with lionel messi really is that i mean that's i mean you knew that was going to happen with him coming here like that wasn't going to hurt the game at all but, I mean, the, I don't think they were expecting this kind of excitement that a lot of just average fans have had. I think the what has helped was that League's Cup, too, is like, I'm not saying that specifically because I know it's just a midseason uh, tournament, kind of like we were chirping the NBA for doing that. But I think that is actually pretty cool. I kind of looked into it. They invite a lot of the teams over from Europe or something like that. So it's not just the MLS teams. It's like an international tournament. And obviously Messi comes over and just ends up winning that shit, too. Mm-hmm. So. Just another one for him. It's not anything like crazy from what I understand in the soccer world, but um, I think the MLS being on the same time when there's no uh, really other sports on other than baseball also helps it out a lot, at least from a casual fan like myself. Uh, when I'm kind of getting sick of watching baseball and I know they're playing, I'll turn I'll turn them on for a little bit or at least try to find a stream. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I literally agree with all those points. It's electric. What time do they play tonight? Nine? They play tonight? Yeah, I thought I saw they play tonight. League's Cup's over. I thought I saw they play tonight. Oh, the MLS play started back up? Yeah. Let me look. August 23rd. Yeah, it's it's not... my. I Literally, I would only tune in for uh, Messi, and they play tomorrow night. But it is tonight. There's uh, LAFC in Colorado at 10.30 p.m., so get some late action on Oh, that. they play... I think they play Saturday. Yeah, they do. Saturday, they play... Yeah, they play Saturday. They play New York. That's the only one I've watched. Like, I'm just going to tune in for Lionel Messi. Yeah. Well, I think that's going to do it. Yes, boys. I think that does it. That's the end of season two of Hit the Books. Lots of good stuff to look forward to as we are ready to jump into the NFL season. Week zero episode next week to start out season three. Our live stream the first Sunday of week one. Our NFL picks and preview live stream. Really excited about all this. As we, again, get closer to that NFL season just 15 days away. That's all I got. Season 2, episode 52 in the books. That's going to do it. You guys got anything else to add? Season 2, already through and through. Damn, that's crazy. But, yeah, like always, thanks for listening. Uh, show support on the social medias. Like, follow, whatever you can do. Uh, other than that, getting excited. Football season so Almost close. Almost Jones us. revenge time.
All right, yeah, let's let's it's almost ace be disappointed conclusion. time. <laughs> All right, you're wearing a Mets hat, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm di- I'm disappointed. It's not as bad as those uh, first round bump from the Bruins, is it? Uh, at least I have a cup in my life, Mac. You want to go down this uh, road? Let's, yeah, let's live in the past. <laughs> I mean, you can't live in the present either because you All guys right, are shaving peace. their heads. You can't live in the present either. Yeah, we can. Look How? at my baseball team. We're in the wild card hunt. Where's yours? You're not gonna make the playoffs. Congratulations. You got a little closer. Yeah, a lot closer. A little. You guys sold the whole team. And we're both going to be golfing at the same time. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I think my teams have a better chance than winning than yours in every sport. Get, but regardless, they're not going to. <laughs> All right. We'll see. I mean, I have how many championships? How many parades for me? How many for you in your life? Yeah, I've already told you you're living in the past. But if you want to keep going to the championships, we can. there's no point in arguing. Hey, history repeats itself. That's what I say, my friend. Is this the 100th episode? Did we figure that out? No, I think it's next week. You're right. It's next week. It's next week. It's next week. Okay. All right. Episode 99. We're done. See you next week. I took Dodgers and Braves. I actually rode, rode the Nationals plus 130.